Good evening. This is GRTS. Welcome to the 8 o'clock news. In the headlines tonight, the Vice President delivers a televised statement marking World Statistics Day today. Twelve members of the armed forces arranged before a court-martial facing charges of treason. The Ministry of Agriculture receives farm implements worth millions of dollars from the FAO and other development partners. And authorities in northeastern Nigeria say more than a dozen people have died after several bombs went off near Maiduguri. These are other stories coming ahead in this half hour. I am Jaina Banyang presenting. Her Excellency, the Vice President Aja Fatumata Jalo Tambajang, has delivered a televised statement on the African Statistics Day today. The day is celebrated each year on the 18th of November to raise public awareness on the important statistics play in supporting economic governance and national growth. Here is an excerpt of her statement. Critical role economic statistics play in independence economic governance that leads to durable growth and linking economic growth with better lives and better economic status for all citizens of the world in general and in Africa particular. Availability and appropriate use of good economic statistics can translate into better lives for people through providing evidence as a base for policy and decision making by the nation of or farms, households and citizens. Statistics provide information for monitoring, evaluation and reporting of the progress in meeting the goals and targets of national development plans and programs. Her Excellency, the Vice President Aja Fatmata Jalo Tambajang. Twelve soldiers have been arranged before a court martial for allegedly committing an act of treason. The accused persons are facing the military court after their arrest in July this year. As we hear in this report by Etienne Silva, among the accused persons are Captain Yaya Bire Jame, Lieutenant Abdullah Jaju, and Lieutenant Yaya Jame, who are facing a jury, who are facing a jury headed by Salif Bojang. As President, Senabu Wada Sisi as Judge Advocate, Lieutenant Colonel Sidi Juf and Army Public Relations Officer, Major Lamin Sanya. To be charged with nine counts ranging from treason, concealment of treason, mutiny and others. Meanwhile, the one week time frame will give accused persons time. The Army and a Civil Justice Wada Sisi, the jurisdiction of the court covers a wide range of offenses, including treason, extrajudicial killings, and any unruly behavior which may contradict military ethics. Today's hearing is no exception. It involves personnel of the Gambia Armed Forces who were accused of a treasonable act through a WhatsApp chat group. The group was found to be used as an avenue to move to unseat the president by the accused persons. Today's court martial as opening of the proceedings was meant to formally arrange them after investigations. The session has been adjourned to 27th November when the accused persons are expected to be charged with nine counts ranging from treason, concealment of treason, mutiny and others. Meanwhile, the one week time frame will give accused persons time to hire competent defense lawyers to contest the case. Etienne Silva. GRTS News. The Ministry of Agriculture has received farm inputs and implements worth over $500 million from the Food and Agriculture Organization, UNICEF, and the World Food Program. The materials are part of a project entitled Post-Crisis Response to Food and Nutrition Insecurities in the Gambia, funded by the European Union. Mariama Balde reports. The materials include motorbikes, farm implements and inputs, and stationaries. The project aims to support agricultural production and productivity, as well as the adoption of climate-smart agriculture techniques. 
Speaking at the handing over ceremony at her office in Fajara, FAO country representative Papetua Katapa Kalala said the project is expected to train 1,000 facilitators who will also train 10,000 farmers on modern farming techniques. We had a very, very successful training session um, of farmer field schools, uh, which ended less than a month ago. Um, and this is really a continuation of the process that was started with that. Uh, because what we want to be able to do is to ensure that those who have been trained um, are also capacitated to be able to carry on the work um, of finally having at least 10,000 farmers as part of the farmer field schools supported by this project. This is, this is the goal. Uh, so if we're going to do that, we know that um, the extension agents, the farmers um, need to be capacitated, not just with training, but with concrete physical material. She said the prevalence of malnutrition is still high in the Gambia and there exist no signs of changes. The Minister of Agriculture, Omar Jallo, commended the donor organization for the support, saying it will enhance government's drive to improve the sector. The field school training is a very laudable innovation whereby the transfer of technology and the transfer of knowledge will now be directly impacting on the target groups who are the farming community of this country. Because we are now training farmers to take the destiny of their farming into their own hands. And I think nothing can be more important than this. Providing motor bicycles, providing equipment and tools that will be used for the implementation of agricultural production, viable food security for this country. I don't think there is anything more important than food security. The European Union project manager, Daryl Sexton, said the twin suck of drought and Ebola in 2014 and 2015 led to the food and nutrition insecurity in the Gambia. He said the project is a relief, rehabilitation and development scheme which aims to provide more support to rural communities that are vulnerable to food and nutrition insecurities. The project recognises that there are underlying causes of food and nutrition insecurity beyond the immediate shocks that led to the ECHO intervention in 2015. There are therefore seven project results areas which are on the one hand aiming to improve household food security through cash for work interventions and support to agriculture and on the other hand through health programmes aiming to promote optimal nutrition and care practices. This recognises that the first thousand days are crucial to a child's physical and cognitive development and that there is a need to focus on, crucial, on the crucial period of pregnancy in the first and the first two years of life. Mr Sexton urged agricultural extension workers to support farmers in improving and adopting proper farming techniques. Reporting for the news, I am Mariama Balde. The Information Minister, Demba Ali Jao, has said that the Gambia needs improved information and communication technology as a pillar for economic growth. Minister Jao was speaking to GFTS's Louis Mendy on Friday in his office on whether the country needs more investment in the sector. A nation's overall strength is essentially decided by its capacity to innovate and for a nation to be stronger, it must implement a range of science and technology projects. This global reality left me the question, does the Gambia need more foreign investors to improve its current ICT situation for economic growth? The information minister answered in the affirmative. All that we need is to kind of develop that infrastructure so that it will reach the ordinary people in their homes. And, you know, I mean, of course, the inspect investors have a, a role to play in that thing because, I mean, probably the intention is there, but the capacity is not there as far as the country is concerned. And this is where the investors can play a role. A data center, which is kind of going to represent the Gambia as far as the IT sector is concerned. And, of course, um, uh, for the content, it is going to kind of localize the content, you know. Could Evalpami therefore be the solution to the Gambia ICT needs? The Estonian ICT consultant 
with 10 years experience in the job is exploring business opportunities in the country. And I have been done business in different uh, continents and different countries like uh, Europe, uh, I don't know, United States, Iran, stuff like this. So that's why uh, I have quite a broad knowledge what's going on and how different countries are developing and, and then we can see what's possible to do. Parni said the Gambia stands to benefit immensely if he has the opportunity to invest in the country. The best way for the Gambia will be obviously the, the, let's say, to jump a bit ahead what's going on right now in the world because, um, or in the other, let's say, developing countries. I think that's even a better way. And look, some very small country which is developing very fast and actually looking where the, all the economies are doing because, let's say, that uh, that kind of key world for the world development globally is actually service sector. You go to the services because all, every, there's a lot of things, there is yes, technical, technical things involved, but there are still services. And obviously IT and ICT are is one thing what I could, I think the country will be very successful and by using that you can lift your development very fast. But the Gambia cognizant of the role of the ICT in building economies has numerous plans to improve the sector. Once you already have the submarine cable, you know, which is, uh, already has got its facilities and uh, also there is this uh, echo one, um, uh, which is the country's backbone, you know, um, for the in, uh, IT, IT development. And um, there are also a lot of other facilities. Information and communications technology in short ICT is said to be one of the main pillars of economic growth in the 20th century. It has important effects on business operation, no matter the size. Louis Mendy, GRTS. UNICEF, in collaboration with the National Youth Council, on Thursday concluded a nationwide sensitization tour on transitional justice for children with a workshop in Banjul. During the tour, officials trained over 1,000 children on their rights and responsibilities in the transitional justice process. SSO reports. UNICEF and the National Youth Council, in collaboration with other stakeholders, spent the last two weeks touring the country. The sensitization workshop on transitional justice in Banjul brought an end to what has been a loaded itinerary for officials. Maria Massima works with the National Youth Council. Um, the purpose of the tour basically is to sensitize the youth and children on the, pro on the transitional justice process and to make sure that they know their rights and responsibilities as youth and children and as citizens of the country. Yeah, and also to avoid what has happened in the past, that's why we embark on such a workshop to enlighten the public on the whole transitional justice process. During the tour, children and youth we are sensitized on their rights and responsibilities in the transitional justice process. Several children have been affected directly or indirectly by human rights violations over the last 22 years. The Gambia government places a high premium on the participation of young people and children in the transitional justice process that, among other things, aims at healing the deep wounds left behind by some of these alleged crimes. We're going to do a child-friendly report with all the recommendation, all their expectation, every notes they've left. The, they created some books with aspiration, expectation. How would they see Gambia in the next five years? Um, what role do they want to play? What kind of initiative could they be taking in the future? So we're going to summarize um, those books and put it in the report. So social welfare always, we, we always work in the be best interest of the children. So we will continue to work in the best interest of the children and continue to uh, encourage the children to take part and participate in, the, in this transitional justice process because the, um, the, the children, most, most of them have been victims. If they're, not, if they're not being first-hand victims, they've been second-hand victims. Most of their parents or uncles or brothers or sisters have suffered in one way or another during the past 22 years of the former regime, and it has taken a toll on them. Officials of the Center for Victims of Human Rights Violations have been active throughout the tour, registering victims across the country. The government is working towards establishing a Truth, Reconciliation and Reparation Commission that will be dealing with issues related to people that suffered abuses during the past regime. We have been giving them a brief introduction of the center, telling them what, what the center is here for. I, hope, I think everybody knows that we are here to advocate for the rights of 
the people whose rights we have violated, advocate for justice, advocate for reparations. Mm -hmm. That's what we are here for. That's what we've been doing. We've been registering victims, direct or indirect victims. That's basically what we are here for. The police is one of the institutions that have been affected. So when we talk about institutional reform, we, the police force also had to be reformed. So um, it is important that police officers are involved because uh, to some extent uh, we were also affected by the 22 years of dictatorship. So uh, I think the police also have a, a greater role uh, when it comes to the transitional justice um, uh, process. The participation of children and young people in the transitional justice process is expected to go a long way in ensuring national reconciliation, establishing the truth, and providing reparation for some of the kids that suffered directly or indirectly. The recommendations and concerns that emerge from the nationwide tour will be quite critical to the successful implementation of the transitional justice process. SRSO, GRTS News. 70 pupils from grades 6 and 9 recently graduated from the ABC school in New Joshua. The ceremony marks the sixth graduation ceremony organized by the school. Women Jai covered the event and filed in this report. <laughs> This cohort of graduates, numbering 70, is the sixth batch of graduates since the establishment of the school in 2012. This is the beginning of a long and challenging road to a successful journey, which I hope you will achieve if you make good use of the opportunities provided for you. The Young Learning Institution has already started making a name for itself as it shows in the outstanding academic performances of its pupils in the NAT, Gabeke and Wasi exams. Today, as I earlier mentioned, marks an important day in your life. And you have extremely done well in your last exams, Gabeke, but the task that lies ahead of you is greater. Because you cannot compare Gabeke exams with WAS exams. WAS is more challenging and competitive than the Gabeke exams. So you need to continue to work harder to make sure that you never let those beautiful sponsors down, you will not let your coordinator down, you will not let your principal down, your teachers and your parents and the country as a whole. Butterfly Friends Foundation are the ones behind the success story of the Learning Center. And I say thank you so much to all of you who work for Butterfly Friends here in the Gambia. We are very good people, so help us so all the children can have the best school, the best exam. And today we have these wonderful people with a wonderful dress on. I wish all of you all the best. And all of you have to try to do to have a very good exam next year. Speaker after speaker commended the efforts of the Butterfly Friends Foundation for bringing education to the doorsteps of the children while urging the members of the graduating class to continue working harder for a brighter future. To the parents, education cannot go in your absence because the amount of time that these children stay in school is very limited. So the rest of the hours that they spend with you, I think you should make good use of the, um, good use of the time. Take the opportunity to at least draw up a program whereby they can always have time for their books whilst at home. During the past summer, the association spent 571500 for e-learning and material production, and they also pay over a million dollars for monthly salaries. The graduation marks the completion of a stage in their academic journey, but yet the beginning of another chapter. Here, the key message to the graduates was for them to be more focused on their educational career. Umin Jai, GRTS. And do stay with us for the short break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the sports news. We'll be right back.
<laughs> we make over the bathroom. So take the plunge into the water. Whoa! Yes! Take your comfort to another level. <laughs> so do not miss the golden deal. The prices? In promotion. Buddy Map. Quality guaranteed. The golden deal. The best deals of the year for the whole house with Buddy Map's quality. The golden deal. <laughs> And over now to the sports news. Tanzania's elite football academy has founded a women's team for the first time, offering girls the chance to learn professional skills. The game is underdeveloped in the East African nation, and some players have had to convince their parents to let them practice. CGTN's Lucy Taylor went along for a training session hard to work at a team sport when you don't have anyone to train with. Janet is considering a professional career in football, but until recently she had to practice on her own. I've just joined this team for two months now. It's a good team. It makes me learn so many things about teamwork, because most of the time I was playing football by myself. But since I came here, I just developed the teamwork cooperation and talk to people play, playing as a team is kind of different from playing alone. This is the first women's team at Tanzania's Youth Academy, which hopes to find the next generation of elite players. Safi. It's bringing together some of the country's rising stars. But the women's game is still developing in Tanzania, and some people just aren't used to the idea of women playing football. Some of these players are among the best in the city, but often what's holding them back is their own families. Some parents prefer their girls to do housework or say the sport is just for boys. We try to convince them to tell that uh, the football is like a normal f sport. The, the, when they come here, they get more than training. They get football training, they, they get life skills education, they communicate with others, they, they get many things. Tanzania has an endless enthusiasm for football, and even if it's still mostly men going to watch the games, these girls believe there's no reason it can't be women on the pitch. Lucy Taylor, CGTN, Dar es Salaam. And do stay with us for another short break. When we come back, we will take a look at news beyond our borders. Stay with us. The best deals of the year. Yeah. If I say discounts on the whole house, you say. Mm -hmm. All right. And if I tell you incredible prices, <laughs> we make over the bathroom. So take the plunge into the water. Whoa. Yes. Take your comfort to another level. <laughs> so do not miss the golden deal. The prices? In promotion. Buddy Map. Quality guaranteed. The golden deal. The best deals of the year for the whole house with Buddy Map's quality. Welcome back and now over to the international scene. For many Zimbabweans, a key character in the drama to succeed veteran leader Robert Mugabe is the First Lady, Grace Mugabe. She has long been seen as the real power behind the President and is one of the frontrunners in the race to succeed him. Until this week, her political rise had been remarkable. CGTN's Jane Kiyo has the story. 
Let me tell you, in any Dukumira Panu, when Grace Mugabe spoke, Zimbabweans listened. He is the unifying force of Zimbabwe, that man. And we must appreciate. The 52 year old has been married to Robert Mugabe for the last 21 years. That constant companion, literally, always by his side. Grace Mugabe had already made a name for herself as a businesswoman and as a self styled philanthropist. Then in 2014, she made her way into politics, starting close to the top. She won the battle for leadership of the ruling party's Women's League. They are appointed, appointed the secretary for women's affairs. In the process, Grace Mugabe had defeated then Vice President Joyce Mujuru a veteran and long-time ally of Robert Mugabe and once seen as a contender to succeed him. Months later, Mujuru was forced out of office and the ruling party, following a campaign led by Grace Mugabe. In recent months, she had targeted another potential successor, Imason Nagagwa. He too had been a long-time ally of the president, a man with powerful friends across the party and the army. In 1980, Mnagagwa tried to topple the president through a coup. He actually tried to wrestle power from the president. I am speaking from my previous position. I have the evidence. Earlier this month, Mnagagwa was fired for alleged disloyalty. At the time, Austin Mnagagwa seemed to have cleared Grace Mugabe's path to the top. Jin Keo, CGTN. In northeastern Nigeria, at least 18 people have been killed and scores wounded in a suspected Boko Haram suicide attack. So